Hi, I'm Tom Lydon, editor of ETF Trends here in Chicago at the Morningstar ETF Conference with Ben Johnson, director of global ETF research at Morningstar. Great conference, Ben, thank you. Thank you, Tom, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, this is always a great conference, kind of the best of the best of the ETF world all comes together. Um, tomorrow, you and I are luckily sitting on the pundits panel together kind of pontificating about <laughs> the ETF marketplace and, and where it might be. Well, as you look at it, what are some of the highlights that you think about in the ETF world? Well, I think the big picture question that, that everyone's asking is, uh, have we gotten to a place where we've got too much of a good thing? So let me unpack that a bit. Are, are there too many products? Are these products now too complex? Have we gone way past innovation into proliferation territory and is too much of the market now indexed passively managed and what are the risks that that might pose to investors at large these are all really important questions questions that we'll tackle tomorrow questions that we can tackle right now yeah so what what do you think I mean are there too many ETFs are there too many people in the space are there companies that really shouldn't be here I mean if you look at the menu now of, of US exchange traded products we've got nearly 2,000 of them. Yep. If you rank order them by their assets under management, what you see is that the largest 100 have three quarters of the assets. Yeah. So I would argue that we've got another 1,800 that are sort of at varying degrees of, of viability, varying degrees of utility in terms of investors' ability to put them to use in their portfolios in a sensible way. So I think we've long since crossed into proliferation territory and that bringing truly innovative products, innovative exposures, useful ones to bear for end investors has become really, really difficult. But there, outside of that 100, there are a lot of companies here who think they can do better. So we've gone from cap weighted to single factor to multi-factor. We're getting uh, all the money that's coming from the active world is now moving over to the ETF space, but is the ETF world starting to get more active? Well, this, this whole active-passive debate is, has always been kind of a false premise, and I think you see that exemplified in, in the ETF space in particular. On the one hand, what you see is that most investors that are using ETFs, which are passive in most cases by definition, are using them in a very active way. They're building strategic asset allocations, they might be using them for exposure to corners of the market where they don't have a particular expertise, they're not gonna try to pick a particular stock or bond or basket thereof. On the other hand, what you see is that if you look at the underlying exposures, you look at what we call strategic beta, what others call smart beta, effectively what that is is just a new form of active management. The indexes that are underneath these products are active by way of design. Yeah. They've got active bets embedded in them, but once that rule book has been written, once the playbook is set, the play has been called, they're passive by way of implementation. Right. So you can't get to the line and yell Omaha and call an audible. <laughs> You're following the rules from there on out. So right. it's a new form of active management to the extent that it's rules-based, in many cases transparent, so transparency is starting to suffer as these things get more complex. Sure that it's lower cost relative to traditional active management, yeah. there's some promise there. Sure, and along with the tax benefits of the ETF structure as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, right. the, the benefits of the chassis, be it intraday tradability, which yeah. is, is just a nice option to have for most, most people aren't going to be day trading these, but the tax efficiency that is lent by that ETF chassis, yeah. especially in some of these strategic beta portfolios that might turn over a full turn, 100% yeah. turnover in a given year, uh, that's a really meaningful advantage if you're going to own those in a taxable account. Sure. So overall, not a bad thing. Competition you know, might be fair and, and sweet, but most importantly, advisors, investors are going to require more education. They're going to require more tools that you know, folks like you and, and we hopefully can it's going to keep us busy for a period of time, Absolutely. would you say? Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the DOL, we could spend another, you know, five minutes talking about that. But uh, it definitely is promising as we go forward. And I'm really looking forward to our panel to tomorrow because I know a lot of good things will come. We'll have some giggles as well. Me too. It's always <laughs> a lot of fun, Tom. All right. Thanks, Ben. Thank you.